what I want to do is c conclude by saying, okay, we started by asking what, if anything, is innate about face perception? And the bottom line is maybe not that much. We don't know yet because there are all these squirrely alternative accounts that haven't been totally nailed yet, but maybe not that much. Maybe the bias to look at faces and attend to them very early might be a very generic template. Like just look at stuff that has more junk on the top than the bottom. Maybe that's all you have to build in. Maybe those early abilities to discriminate faces are based on some more generic um, object shape perception thing. And apparently, as this last study shows, the development of the face patches requires experience. Okay, so that's all well and good, but we haven't engaged with the problem of how do the damn face patches always land in the same place? How do they know to land there and not somewhere else? And that was the original intuition that I tried to get you guys in the grip of that was the basis of which most of you said if you had to guess, you'd guess that system is partly innate. Otherwise, why would it have the same structure in everyone? Okay. So nobody knows the answer to this. It's 12.25, I'm gonna end in two minutes. Um, but one possibility is that there's some more rudimentary kind of functional selectivity in that region at birth that somehow boots, like say, selectivity for curved things, that somehow bootstraps the fact that that region becomes a face area. That wouldn't be a total account. We'd have to say, how did it get selectivity for curved things and so forth, but it's a, maybe a part of the story. Another part of the story is remember I said the long range connections of the brain are mostly present at birth. Maybe there are distinctive connections of that part of the brain. And maybe it's those connections that somehow constrain the development of that region and somehow instruct the developing brain to stick its face patch right there. Okay, there's some data for that we'll get to eventually. And finally, I'll say that, um, th that these are just sort of local questions with the innateness of these uh, of face perception abilities and, and brain regions for processing faces. Um, but bigger, broader, deeper questions about, uh, about this whole system are actually starting to be addressed by computational models, and particularly by deep nets. And the reason I mentioned Dan Yemen's talk tomorrow is that the work that he's doing, although maybe just a tiny part of his talk, he's starting to go at this problem using deep nets, and it's super exciting. The kinds of questions that you can ask with deep nets are, what would you need to build into a network? You're training this network, right? It's just a model that you put together. What do you need to build into it to get face patches at the end of training? And what kind of stimuli would it need to see to end up with face patches? So that enables us to ask, what in principle might the necessary conditions be for a network to spontaneously learn uh, face selectivity and face patches. Okay, so that's just, just as of the last year or so become a tractable question using deep nets. And there isn't an answer yet, but we're on the cusp of finding stuff out. Okay, and even more fundamentally, those network approaches can ask, why computationally do we have face patches in the first place? What is it that we can do as information processing systems if we have this kind of brain architecture that we might not be able to do as well if we didn't.